Good morning everybody, it's Al again and I wanted to do a quick uh, update on the uh, aquaponics system. It is Monday, uh, January 4th, 2013 and uh, uh, we introduced uh, fish into the system yesterday and uh, we put a hundred uh, goldfish into that tank so they can start producing ammonia and uh, nitrates into the system uh, by virtue of feeding them <coughs> they're going to uh, produce waste and also whatever food they don't need initially uh, you know would be converted to uh, to food source for uh, the plants uh, <coughs> and uh, we introduced them yesterday afternoon after slowly uh, you know we put the bags in the water for about an hour and then we transferred them into that bucket down there and then I started uh, adding a little bit of water from the tank into their water to adjust so they would get adjust to the uh, type of water and the pH levels and all that kind of stuff uh, and they seem to have been doing fine uh, I came in this morning and uh, and I see them uh, moving around in there and kind of hard to see you, know, you might be able to see some through that water that water is pretty dark for two reasons we have the tank covered with uh, uh, with plastic all around so it doesn't degrade the plastic and also so it doesn't uh, uh, it doesn't get algae but also the uh, the extract from the uh, seaweed extract that we put in there uh, gives it a darker uh, color to the water uh, makes it a little brown but the fish are doing fine I don't there's no fish floating around I see them I see the little specks of orange uh, floating around or moving around and then you could probably you might have seen some up there in just a minute and you can see some now uh, they are hard to see but they're definitely there and they're moving around uh, the plants are doing quite well Last night I came in here and the pH had risen in the tank to about 7.6, which is uh, much higher than I would like it to be. So I mixed up a little acid into, uh, into that bucket there and slowly added a little bit every 30 minutes into it. And, uh, and so that seemed to have done the trick because when I came in this morning I uh, just did a pH test and uh, let me bring it here and you might be able to see this uh, fairly clearly but uh, the pH test shows uh, that the pH is probably around 6.6 .6 or so so that uh, is perfect uh, anything between 6 and 7 it's, uh, it's great for the plants and the plants as you can tell are doing quite well the only thing I don't like is that they seem to be, uh, they need a little bit of iron and also the, uh, the lack of iron uh, in highly alkaline water by itself uh, causes the iron not to be absorbed by the plant. So we have ordered some chelated iron uh, to add to the water which will decrease the pH but will also make those plants instantly green. I mean they're just going to, you know, get vibrantly green. So. Uh, I think we're doing well at this point. It's probably going to take a week or so to get the uh, chelated iron. And in the meantime, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I send my wife uh, to uh, get some uh, uh, iron sulfate, uh, iron supplements for humans that you can get out of Walgreens. And uh, I'm just going to grind those up and uh, powderize it. And they just introduce a little bit in the water just to have something uh, until my chelated iron comes in here. Sulfated iron works, uh, but there, it's not absorbed as readily as chelated iron is in plants. Uh, but it still will do the trick. And uh, I'm not in no, in no hurry to right now because the plants are obviously doing quite well. Uh, they're all standing up pretty good. Uh, I don't see any, any problem with any of these plants looks like this guy here is about ready to uh, to drain it's getting up there so let's see if we can watch one of these uh, 
There we go. It's draining right now. You can see the water level dropping in there. See that? So that's the uh, bell cycle working as it should. And this tray will dra drain completely. Will allow the, the feeder roots to breathe oxygen. And then it will uh, raise back up. And it will take a few minutes to raise back up. So that cycle is what allows these plants to thrive. And the fact that the water level is rising to the roots, it allows for these plants not to have to send uh, roots growing sideways to A, uh, anchor themselves, and B, uh, to go in search for water and nutrients, because the nutrients are coming right to it. So what happens is these plants develop some uh, a clump of very healthy feeder roots, which are very fine uh, roots. They almost look like hairs, and uh, that allows you to be able to increase the density, uh, the planting density. In one of these trays here, uh, I'm going to, in the uh, next batch, I'm going to plant close to 20 uh, head of lettuce or cabbage. Uh, and we'll try that density. There was a study done by the uh, Department of Agricultural Resources in the southeast region uh, in conjunction with the University of the Virgin Islands uh, doing an aquaponics system that they started back in 1996. They updated I think the uh, documentation in 2005 and they are growing 20, almost 29 and a half heads of lettuce per cubic meter or I'm sorry per square meter. And a square meter is approximately 3.3 feet or just a little bit over a yard. So if you can think, you know, in terms of having one square yard and have a planting density of almost 30 heads of cabbage or lettuce, that is just phenomenal. And using only 2% of the water that would normally be required in a regular, uh, you know, planting situation where you have these things planted in, in, in uh, rooted, in, you know, or rooted in soil. Uh, this is just absolutely efficient, especially in places where, you know, uh, it's dry and there isn't much water. It's a great conservation strategy, and it's a closed-loop system. So if you can have fish in there, and all you need to do is feed the fish, and then take that fish waste, and what they breathe, the, the breathing action of the gills produces ammonia in the water, and their excrement creates nitrates and ammonia. Now, all that stuff goes over here and these vegetables are the, the filters for the water. They'll filter the water back and then that water gets returned from that pump right there that's in that sump through that hose that you see and back into the tank and you can see it back there where the output of the pump from the sump is coming into it. Well that water gets agitated and that creates uh, bubbles and, and that oxygenates the water. In addition to that, I have a secondary pump that, uh, that goes into the bottom of this uh, uh, fish tank and that also uh, recirculates that water in case the primary pump should fail. In addition to that, we have a, uh, uh, an air stone, two air stones in the tank uh, powered by this uh, aquarium air pump, but it's, 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 uh, it's for uh, an air pump for a 300 gallon aquarium. This is a 270 gallon tote, so we're perfectly matched there. And then the system is fed automatically uh, and maintained at the proper water level through uh, that hose, which goes to the outside to a faucet. And, uh, and that hose uh, gets connected to a float you can probably see there and it's under water right now uh, so that is essentially how the system is designed to work we hope that uh, those fish will increase in size quite rapidly uh, and uh, as the fish increase then the system will become healthier and it will become more stable uh, where it will need a, hardly at all human innovation and then we'll be able to uh, put uh, an additional vegetable load on it because I really want to, uh, in this area here, there's going to be two more trays, uh, but they're not going to be uh, these 50 gallon halves. I have another uh, 270 gallon uh, water tote uh, 
uh, similar to or identical to this one here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that bottom section that you see there and I'm going to cut that toad right above that line right there and then I'm going to cut right below that line right there and that leaves the middle section it will be a wafer that's just gone now we take that top section flip it over that becomes a tray and then that bottom part that consists of those two sections there that is in itself a tray so we end up with two nice big long trays that I could put uh, maybe a floating raft designed for cabbages and lettuces while we have everything that flowers uh, up on this end like broccoli carrots onions uh, we can plant corn here tomatoes obviously uh, radishes uh, we have uh, bok choy and we have a number of uh, other uh, spices that we want to also try to grow and just kind of measure and see you know what the growth rate is on these things so we can get an, uh, an idea of what we could get so anyways that's the update things are uh, doing well uh, uh, I wanted to show you also this we want to see what that looks like from what I showed you two days ago and there were only like three little plants showing you can clearly see now there, uh, the bok choy is coming in real well and I can see over here the lettuce is also starting to come you can see the little sprouts over here we're gonna get closer so you can get a good look at it there's the sprouts right there and there's more sprouts over there so the lettuce is coming in just fine uh, celery is still not coming through but it hasn't even been a week so all that stuff will come and uh, then we'll transfer that so thanks for watching everybody, uh, take care and God bless you all, take care.